Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. This is uh, a second part of uh, I'm following up um, with my teaching tutorials on the websites to use and what to look for. And here we're looking at um, we're looking at uh, Hurricane Irma. And I, what I'm doing is I'm comparing it to what happened with Hurricane Harvey, which came ashore in Texas hovered around and stalled and dumped huge amounts of rain up to 50 inches in Texas. So could this type of thing possibly happen again with this next storm? And I also, there's another storm that's generating that's following it. So it's also important to look, when this goes by, if you look at the sea surface temperature from where it passed, you can see whether the water's cooled down or whether the water's still warm. And if the water is still as warm as it was before the storm approached, it means that the water deeper down is very, very warm. And this is very bad news because these storms, as they slow down, they can still maintain their strength because they're not churning up cold water from below. They're bringing up warm water from below. So this is the present jet stream configuration here. And so this is the key thing to watch for. Um, I should point out, so in the previous video, I talked about the science of some of these storms. So the key things are sea surface temperature over 26.5, right? So we're talking about 30 degrees sea surface temperature, all the close to 30 here and 31, 32 in, in this region. Okay, all the way in. So the storm will continue to gain strength if it follows that route. Also the jet streams here, if the jet streams were in this configuration, they're much lower now than they were for um, for, for Harvey, okay? So for Harvey, this thing was shifted up to about here. The bottom part here was shifted up to about here. So when Harvey came ashore in Texas, these, guy, these winds didn't pull it away quickly. It just hovered. It was moving a few kilometers an hour, dumping all of this rain. It came ashore as a category four, looped back in, and then, came, and then had another landfall, and then looped back in, had a third landfall. It was always connected to the, between the ocean and the land, so it acted as a fire hose or a conduit and brought huge amounts of water just basically from the evaporated water off to the Gulf of Mexico and dumped it right ashore. And this kept going for days and days and we got these horrendous rainfall amounts. So I'll call it a superstorm, you know, superstorm Harvey, you know, much damages more than Katrina and and uh, Sandy put together. Katrina and Sandy, both Katrina, of course, 2005, New Orleans, broke the sea walls, storm surge was high, broke the, the winds and the storm surge, it broke the sea walls, flooded lots of New Orleans, caused all that damage. Sandy, uh, 2012, came up the coast, was blocked by the jet stream, so couldn't turn right like every other hurricane, turns right, some of them have turned right 270 degrees and come ashore, Sandy just did a left. Very, very unusual. It was blocked by the jet streams and surge, you know, it, it, it overtopped the barriers in, in New York and it caused huge damages there from the storm surge. Of course, Harvey was a different beast. It was all of the rainfall. So what about this? What about Irma is the big question. So it all depends on these jet streams, what they do. Um, also, there's a lot of, when, a hurricane stalls near the coast, okay, or any storm stalls near the coast, it drops a lot of water on the land, and then it's called, the term brown ocean has been used for describing the land. It's really wetland, it's really land that's covered with water, and that water on the land can actually evaporate and contribute to keeping the storm intense, to feeding the storm. So instead of the storm Storms, when they go over land, they normally immediately lose strength and dissipate and they're carried away. If they're moving 14, 15, 20 kilometers an hour, they're carried away, losing strength quickly. You know, if it's hovering around the coastline a few kilometers an hour, dumping rain, staying over that spot, then you have this brown ocean effect where the storm can maintain intensity over the land for long periods of time. And if the storm is so large that parts of it are going over the ocean and parts are over the land, then it just continues to be recharged. It's like the Energizer Bunny. It just keeps on ticking, keep on collecting water. And like I said, it's a conduit or connection from the ocean surface to the land. And since the water temperature is warm down to depths, 
you know, it can just sit there and take heat from the ocean. And then warmer water comes up beneath to the surface and that heat's taken from the storm and then more water comes up. And if the water's a couple hundred meters deep, very warm off the coastline, then this is a real problem. Okay, a similar fire hosing thing has been seen in the winter off the East Coast. We can get these loops like this around a low pressure area. The evaporated, the warm water off the ocean in the fall, for example, or early winter, uh, lots of evaporation. That water is carried over the cold land, dumps snow, and you can get this cycle here where you get enormous dumps of snow on the East Coast from a similar type of cycling, a fire hosing of the water, the evaporated water, water vapor in the atmosphere carried over the land. Um, you know, it's cold enough over the land that it falls as snow and this cycle continues. So as the jet streams, as we continue to warm the planet and lose Arctic sea ice and snow, and snow cover in the Arctic in the spring, the Arctic gets much, much warmer. The jet streams slow down and become much, much wavier like this. Like just look at these jet streams. I mean, look at the waves here. You know, look at, look at the huge waves, the ridges and the troughs and, you know, even, it's even worse in the southern hemisphere. You know, look at the width of some of these things. So I did a video talking about how the jet streams are crossing the equator. New phenomena. I did a video about how the jet streams are space filling. They're so broken and fractured that the actual jet streams take, you know, there's, there, you can take this area and this area and this area, which are not covered by jets and the rest of it, you know, most of the southern hemisphere is covered by jet streams. And, uh, you know, if you look, um, you know, there's very weird stuff going on. Look at the fine delineations here and so on. So it all depends what happens. So one of the things you can do in Earth's Null School is if you go here and you can click across here, you, let's go forward a day. So this is September 4th. Let's go, it goes about a week into the future. So let's click here. Okay, so this shows the projected path, that's September 5th. So the key thing is if this stays here, then, then, then Irma won't stick around for too long. It'll come up here, it'll, it'll do its damage on the land, and then it'll be carried off. Okay, so if it comes across here on the tip of Florida, it comes in here and then it's gonna come up here and cross Florida or even, you know, or even be dragged up further here. Okay, so let's look and see. So here's, uh, so this is showing what's going on. So at least in this model, you know, we're following this path. Okay, um, now what hap what's happening here? You know, could this thing, things wanna turn right in the Northern Hemisphere, but what if it gets caught in here and loops around? Uh, that would be very strange. Let's keep going and server down. Okay, so it doesn't have data up there. Okay, so the data is to here. Okay, so we could look at the things like this, the, the, uh, okay, so according to this, what day is this? This is a uh, projection for uh, September 8th. Um, and so we've got this, so if it's coming here, it's forward motion will be stalled, right? It'll probably come off here, it'll slow down, do quite a bit of damage here, and then be carried off if it continues on this path. Best case would be if it comes up here a bit, get catches this and gets dragged off before doing much damage. Um, you know, every day is crucial now with the models. So, um, you know, frequently check the the um, frequently check the cones here from National Hurricane Center, NHC.NOAA. If you Google that and click on the various uh, various. Uh, maps and things you can see that this is a sort of cone going on as i explained in the previous video okay so these things are key now if you don't have a twitter account open a twitter account um follow me at paul h beckwith i post all kinds of stuff on twitter it's automatically fed to my facebook page which is open to anybody um so paul h beckwith and what you do is if you're not familiar with it you can go in and and do a search. So you put in uh, hashtag Irma. Okay, and click Irma. Okay, so, and this is a great way to follow things. So this is the top tweets here. Okay, so this is showing, if you live in South Florida, 
This is all you need to take Irma seriously. Remarkable agreement between GFS and Euro are two best models. So this is cycling. This is showing the GFS model. This is showing the, um, the GFS model in time, you know, coming up, okay? Projecting through different dates, okay? Um, okay, so this is the t these are the top tweets. Governor has declared a state of emergency ahead of possible Irma strike. Okay, here's the cone, the ensemble, the spaghetti curve. So these are a whole bunch of different model runs, slightly tweaking the parameters. And what you can see is, you know, these ones here, you know, if one of these pans out, you know, this thing can be dragged up and carried by the jet streams if these ones pan out. But unfortunately, over time, this tends to be shifting down. So this puts Florida at more at risk. If it's one of these models, it'll come right up here into the Gulf and the Gulf water is very warm. Okay, uh, images of the eye wall and the speeds and all kinds of stuff here. Okay, category four strength for five consecutive days as the forecast. Okay, warm water all the way along. It's category four now, so stay there. It could go to a category five. There is no category six. Um, Okay, so there's all kinds of images here. So it's worth joining Twitter just to see what's going on for this storm. If you go latest, okay, this is, uh, so this was posted 28 seconds ago. You know, future track and spaghetti curves and um, more, more things, current guidance, four to five foot, foot swells, etc. cetera. Okay, there's the cone again from, uh, I guess, the 11 p.m. advisory. Okay, 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, Monday, September 4th, the cone, and you can get news reports. This is the best way, Twitter is the best way to follow an ongoing um, thing like a hurricane or natural, some, some natural disaster. You know, there's always hashtag set up. You can just search for the hashtag and look at everybody's posting from there, okay? It's, a, it's by far the best way of tracking um, a particular event in basically, essentially real time, okay? And then you can retweet things, you can cut and paste stuff, cut and paste links, copy images, pay, post them yourself, etc. So I highly recommend as this storm proceeds that you look at this and you get all the latest updates. It's, a, it's the easiest way to follow what is going on. Um, and this is my um, this is my web this is my blog, my website. So I posted this. If you haven't watched the science of superstorms after Harvey, what's next? I highly recommend it. Um, I talked about the uh, brown ocean stuff. I talked about sea surface temperature being crucial. What high warm temperatures with depth. This is me crawling through a tunnel. Maybe we'll have to all live under the sea as climate change proceeds. And um, so you can follow uh, you can follow my blog. So whenever there's an update, you can subscribe to my blog. And I'm not uh, teaching this term. You know, when you teach, it's very precarious employment. At the university, you know, you have stability if you teach high school, but if you teach at the university, you just get sessional, and you're a sessional, you just get courses from time to time. Um, and sometimes you're, you're out of luck, so that's the case for me this fall. So, you know, I do these videos. This is my only income right now, so please consider a donation to support my videos. I like doing two or three videos a week. And if you do make a donation, if you have made a donation, I thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. It allows me to continue my videos and my work. Um, and you can also, if you do make a donation, you can suggest, uh, you know, what you'd like to see a video on, for example. And I'll try to accommodate that. Give me ideas on, on, on videos. So um, this is when I talked about um, unprecedented jet stream crossing the equator. This went viral, something like 450,000 views on this. Um, and uh, some of my recent videos are, these are some tutorials on Harvey, but they apply to any storm. Um, and, uh, you know, so tutorials, um, there's lots of claims going around, like that are absolutely ridiculous for climate change. So I talk about that. Or you can just go and Google my YouTube channel and get loads of information. So thank you for listening and please consider um, a donation. Thanks.